again, my name is Dina Morzine. I'm in Southern Oregon. Um, I have actually been using Edge Elastic for almost 10 years now. I came across it at a technology conference quite a while ago, and I actually started off with science, using it with science. And um, as an elementary teacher, of course, we teach all subjects. So um, I do use it for more than just math. I use it for basically all my subjects when it's appropriate. But the reason I was going to talk about math today is because a lot of schools and a lot of districts and a lot of classrooms are just now getting into math RTI. So we've been doing it for reading forever, it seems like at the elementary level, um, but we are just now kind of trying to explore it, at least in our district, for math also. So I know somebody asked in the chat box about is this a, a RTI for just math and all of these graphs and data I think that we're all showing could be applicable to any subject. So I, it, I, it was just a random thing. I think that we probably all picked math to show. Um, so this first slide, oh, and I was gonna say too, um, so our fourth grade team, there's three teachers in our fourth grade team. We all share, um, we're all co-teachers in each other's edge elastic classes. So we can share data. And again, all that great data that they were showing um, when you share classes, if you want with your co-teacher, then you can see it across the grade level, which we're doing our RTI across grade levels. Like he said, also, obviously, we're not doing it this year because <laughs> um, of the COVID restrictions and not being able to mix cohorts. But we started doing this RTI last year, and it worked really great where we were sharing our classrooms with each other. And this is one example of one of the um, performance datas the data is um, data graphs that you can look at and you can see immediately right here who's proficient who's basic and who's below now i didn't I, I cut out student names down at the bottom of this graph so that for privacy but literally on this graph if you click on any of those pie pieces there so if i clicked on that eight percent that um shows 8% of my students are below basic right underneath of it it would actually pull up the um, 8% of those students, it would name those students. So, and it, again, this is on um, one assessment. So it's on one standard. So I would be able to say, okay, these four students are below basic and we need to have an intervention for them. And then same with the 23% piece. If you click on that 23% piece, it's gonna tell me all of the students who are at that proficiency level. So I can pull them off for a different intervention. And of course the 69% that are proficient, um, we would want to move them on to the next level. So it is a super powerful um, report. And again, when we're sharing our classes with our co-teachers, we can see it across our grade level. So it's not just my, my class's data that I can see, I can see everybody's. So when we're getting ready to pull out for intervention groups, we can very quickly go to this standard and say, okay, these 10 kids are going with you, these 12 kids are going with you, and the um, higher percent kids are gonna go with the third teacher and we're gonna extend their knowledge. And so go ahead and go to the next one, Jan. Again, this is just a different type of a report. This one is called the, stu um, the standards report, sorry. And again, up at the top, you can see where it says the name of the standard. It's uh, for MBT. Yep, right there, thank you. You can see the name of the standard very quickly and scroll down and I can immediately see the four students who are below proficiency that I need to have an intervention with. Um, it does list the students' names farther over on the left side, but again, I cut those off for privacy reasons. But again, I can very quickly see the four students who need more assistance on this specific standard. And then the rest of the students who uh, mastered this standard already on this assessment, at least. Again, this is just my class. This one is just my class. So it has a limited amount of responses and, and I feel pretty good that only four students <laughs> need an intervention on it. Um, we've been doing distance learning for the last 10 months. So I, I and having the opportunity to use Edge Elastic while the kids are at home is amazing because I can still pull this amazing data and I can still do interventions with them, um, even if it's via Zoom and say, okay, you four need to show up at this time so we can do a quick intervention. Um, and then Jan, go ahead and go to my last slide. So this is a whole different type of report. This is called the standards report. And again, it is, uh, oh, sorry, the last one was the standards report, my bad. This is the individual question performance. So the, the thing that I loved about this is 
it's the same standard, but for some reason, my kids did really, really well on question one. 92% of my kids got question one right. And then question two, 70%, less than 70% got the question right. So for me, this was a flag as a teacher. I went in and specifically looked at these two questions and so the first question was a simple division. It was one di uh, three digit divided by one digit. And 92% of my kids got that. And I'm like, yes, that's great. The second question was a three digit divided by what? No, it was a four digit divided by one digit, but it had a remainder. And so I can assess that and see, okay, my kids have got the simple division with no remainder, but there's a good chunk of my kids that don't have it when there's a remainder. So again, I know that I need to go back in and work with those specific kids for an intervention to help review with them what to do when there's a remainder.